This tutorial is for 5th grade, Module 1, Lesson 7. In this lesson, we're going to look at how finding the midpoint between two numbers can help us round those numbers. The directions say to fill in the blanks to round this number, 3 and 12 hundredths. First of all, this number is found between which two whole numbers? By whole numbers, we're looking at the numbers in the ones place. So 3 and 12 hundredths would be found between the whole numbers of 3 and 4. So that number falls in between 3 and 4. Now the midpoint of 3 and 4, or the halfway point, would be 3 and 1 half. And as a decimal, that would be 3 and 5 tenths. So 3 and 5 tenths is the midpoint, the halfway point, between the numbers 3 and 4. Now the same number, 3 and 12 hundredths, is found between the tenths of, well let's look up and see what digit is in my tenths place. I have one tenth. So my number falls between 3 and 1 tenth and 3 and 2 tenths, since that would be the next tenth. Now let's think about the midpoint between 3 and 1 tenth and 3 and 2 tenths. The midpoint would be 3 and 1 tenth and 5 hundredths. Now let's use these numbers to help us round the original number. We're going to round the original number to the nearest 1 or to the nearest whole number. Well we said that number is in between 3 and 4. So 3 would be the smallest number it could round to. 4 would be the greatest. Now let's plot the midpoint. We said the midpoint between those two numbers would be 3 1's and 5 tenths. The next step is to plot this actual number on our vertical number line. So 3 1's and 5 tenths is the midpoint. Since my number has 3 1's and 1 tenth, I know that it would fall below the midpoint. So that number would fall roughly about here on the midpoint because it has 1 tenth compared to 3 1's and 5 tenths. Since the number is below the midpoint, we would round this number to 3 1's. So 3 and 12 hundredths rounded to the nearest 1 would equal 3. Now let's take that same number and round it to the nearest tenth. Well, we said that the original number 3 and 12 hundredths would fall between 3 1's and 1 tenth and 3 1's and 2 tenths. We also said that the midpoint between those two numbers is 3 1's, 1 tenth, and 5 hundredths. So I have my two choices and I have my midpoint. Now let's plot the original number again on the vertical number line. Well, 3 1's, 1 tenth, and 2 hundredths would fall below 3 1's, 1 tenth, and 5 hundredths. And again, since it falls below the midpoint, we will round it down to 3 1's and 1 tenth. So when we round that number to the nearest tenth, it will equal 3 1's and 1 tenth, or 3 and 1 tenth. Let's look at another example. This time our number is 5 and 37 hundredths. Well, the number falls between the whole numbers of 5 and 6. So this number would fall between 5 and 6. The midpoint between 5 and 6 is 5 and 1 half. And again, as a decimal, we would write that 5 and 5 tenths. Now this number falls between the tenths of 5 wholes and 3 tenths and 5 wholes and 4 tenths. The midpoint between these two numbers would be 5 wholes, 3 tenths, and 5 hundredths. So that's the midpoint between 5 and 3 tenths and 5 and 4 tenths. Now let's use all of these numbers to help us with our rounding on the vertical number line. We'll start by rounding the number to the nearest 1. And we said our original number, 5 and 37 hundredths, falls between 5 ones and six ones. 
the midpoint would be 5 ones and 5 tenths. Now let's plot the number on the number line. The number has 5 ones and 3 tenths and 7 hundredths. Well, the 3 tenths would fall below the midpoint of 5 ones and 5 tenths. So we'll put that point on the number line. And again, since the number falls below the midpoint, it rounds down to 5 ones. So rounded to the nearest 1, the number equals 5. Now let's round it to the nearest tenth. Well, we said the number falls between 5 and 3 tenths, or 5 ones and 3 tenths, and 5 ones and 4 tenths. The midpoint is 5 ones, 3 tenths, and 5 hundredths. And again, we'll plot this number. Well, it has 5 ones, it has 3 tenths, but it has 7 hundredths, so it would be plotted above the midpoint. And since it's above the midpoint, it would round up. So when I take my original number and round it to the nearest tenth, it rounds to five ones and four tenths. The next number I'm going to round is 864 thousandths. We're going to start by rounding it to the nearest tenth. So if I look at the digit in the tenths place, I have eight tenths. So this number would be found between 8 tenths and 9 tenths on the number line. The midpoint between 8 tenths and 9 tenths would be 8 tenths and 5 hundredths. Now let's use that information to help us round below. We're, we're rounding this number to the nearest tenth. So it's going to be found between zero ones and eight tenths and zero ones and nine tenths. The midpoint between these two numbers would be zero ones, eight tenths, and five hundredths. Knowing that, let's plot the original number. So it has eight tenths, but it has six hundredths. So six hundredths would fall above the midpoint of five hundredths. So we'll plot that in, and since it falls above the midpoint, it would round up to 0, 1s, and 9 tenths. So the number 864 thousandths rounded to the nearest tenth is 0 and 9 tenths. Now let's go back to part B of this top problem. Now it says the number is found between the hundredths of what? Well, we have 86 hundredths in this number, so it's going to be found between 86 hundredths and 87 hundredths. The midpoint between 86 hundredths and 87 hundredths is 86 hundredths and 5 thousandths, or we could read this as 865 thousandths. Let's use these numbers to help us round. So, if I'm going to round it to the nearest hundredth, I would be looking at the number zero ones, eight tenths, and six hundredths, or it could round to zero ones, eight tenths, and seven hundredths. The number is going to fall somewhere in between these two numbers. The midpoint of these two numbers would be 0 ones, 8 tenths, 6 hundredths, and 5 thousandths. So let's plot our original number on the number line. Well, it has 8 tenths, and it has 6 hundredths, but it has 4 thousandths, so that would fall below the midpoint, 8 tenths, six hundredths, four thousandths. That means when we round, we would round down to eight tenths and six hundredths, or eighty-six hundredths. When rounded to the nearest hundredth, eight hundred sixty-four thousandths is equal to eighty-six hundredths. Our last question says, for an Olympic competition, the throwing circle in the men's shot put must have a diameter of 
2 and 135 thousandths meters. We're to round this number to the nearest tenth to estimate the diameter, and we'll use the vertical number line to show our work. Well, since we're rounding to the nearest tenth, let's focus on the digit that's in the tenths place. So we know that our number will fall between 2 and 1 tenth and 2 and 2 tenths. The midpoint between these two numbers would be 2 and 1 tenth and 5 hundredths. So we have our two numbers and we have the midpoint. Let's plot the original number on the number line. So it has two whole numbers, one tenth, but it has three hundredths. That would fall below the midpoint of two whole numbers, one tenth and five hundredths. So we'll put that on our vertical number line and show that that would round down to two and one tenth. So rounded to the nearest tenth, two and 135 thousandths meters would equal two and one tenth meters.